Welcome everyone um, to this latest installment of our Vault 101 webinar series. My name is John Jarvis, JJ for short. I'm a technical consultant here at uh, Summerford. I'm chipped, as we say, in both uh, Terraform and Vault. <clears throat> that stands for Certified HashiCorp Implementation Professional. By the way, um, so yeah, we're, and we're talking about Vault today, obviously. Um, and specifically about um, Vault in the key management space. So managing cryptographic material and whatnot. So we'll start off um, with a bit of a, a one pager, a summary of um, what is the Hashi stack effectively, affectionately known. Um, the main products um, that HashiCorp offers. I'm gonna actually spend some time on what we won't talk about today because key management, you may be thinking different things. Um, and there are a plethora of um, vault use cases that we could be talking about today um, that do involve keys, um, but we're specifically going to focus on um, how you can use it as an external manager um, when you're interacting with cloud KMSs. Um, and we'll talk a bit about um, the KMIP protocol in general. So um, we'll focus in on that for the for this session, but I'll also give you some pointers to where you can find lots of other inf uh, information on the other things Vault can do around keys. We'll finish up with um, a little bit on where we've seen in the past that um, organizations consider migrating to from the open source offering of Vault to Vault Enterprise. We'll give you some of those resources I talked about. Um, I'll talk a bit about us before I wrap up, but um, not too long, I promise. It's just, there's a lot of logos, so it's over two slides <laughs> all right so the hashi stack well hashi code first um it's all about cloud computing and specifically helping organizations take advantage of it easily uh, they don't presuppose what that looks like it can be full bore multi-cloud services all the way to a few early cloud services that an organization wants to seamlessly operate alongside a lot of legacy on-prem stuff um, HashiCorp's tooling, uh, seen here and affectionately known as the Hashi stack, can help organizations across that spectrum. Um, as I sort of hinted at, it's worth noting that um, all four of these products have open source editions, um, as well as more fully featured and officially supported enterprise editions. Okay, so first up, uh, Terraform, infrastructure as code. This is about um, the new speed of business, yes, but it's also about all the good things that come with code. That consistency, uh, minimizing the, the risk of humans botching things, um, and making sure far and wide in your organization, things are done the same and well every time. An auditor's dream. Second, Vault, subject of today. Again, it's about consistency, and where there used to be a sprawl of secrets and a hodgepodge of secrets management tooling, now there's a centralized resilience store to flexibility to pretty much cover every use case, as well as improving on them. For example, um, in the case of dynamic secrets, where um, even in that worst case scenario, data breach, those secrets are of limited and then diminishing utility. <clears throat> Third, console, bottom left. Um, this is about underpinning all those workloads and applications in a dynamic fashion. For example, this cloud infrastructure that you've codified and built with Terraform, well, it changes at pace, and that means your networking needs to keep up. Support tickets for updating firewall rules are out, and automated service discovery is in. Finally, Nomad, um, an orchestrator like Kubernetes, um, but focused on simplicity in contrast to the former's um, complexity. Uh, Nomad is happy to work alongside or across, sorry, on-prem and cloud-based workloads too, which comes back to those organizations that are just starting to dip their toes in cloud, so to speak. Should also emphasize that last year in particular, there's a big push um, with Nomad and edge computing. So you'd probably be surprised at some of the um, platforms where it can it can happily run in terms of its power, their, their power and, you know, the the quality of their network connectivity, let's say. Anyway, today, today's focus, Vault. So 
but <laughs> before we get into that, what we will be talking about, let's just quickly talk about what we won't be talking about. Um, first up, um, we'll be talking about cryptographic keys today, but not um, secure shell SSH keys, nor Vault's ability to build scalable role-based SSH access, um, as sort of summarized in that diagram on the right. There's a whole blog post on that um, that you should be able to find on their website if you are interested. Um, nor will we be uh, talking about um, Vault's integration with a product I haven't talked about, Boundary, and won't be obviously beyond that. <laughs> Um, and how that supports remote access use cases where the remote access is seamless and the credentials actually never are never presented nor are stored on that, um, at that, to that endpoint or on that endpoint, be it a laptop or whatever. Um, but if you're curious about this, by the way, um, go to dev. I'll be talking about that a lot. That's um, developer.hashicorp.com and search for credential injection for this particular use case. It's really neat, trust me. Um, we also won't be talking about Vault's encryption as a service today, but we do offer workshops um, where you can get hands-on with that as part of configuring database secrets engines. Um, so yeah, check out our events calendar for um, the next offering of that if you're interested. And finally, um, we won't be talking about using Vault as an, an intermediate uh, certificate authority either today, but that was the subject of my last one-on-one -on -one webinar. Where I made far fewer mistakes, <laughs> um, and which you should be able to find on our uh, YouTube channel um, now. Okay, so um, with that, let's get on to talk about what we actually will be talking about. Um, two different use cases around using Vault as an external key or cryptographic material management service. Okay, first up, external key management of various cloud key management systems. Um, okay, so the challenge um, can be that many cloud providers um, offer a key management service, a KMS, where encryption keys can be issued and stored for maintaining a root of trust. However, when you're looking at bringing your own keys into play, this often leads to a lot of lifecycle management work that's heavily manual. One tidy solution is Vault's Key Management Secrets Engine. Um, it provides an API abstraction layer and offers a standardized workflow uh, for the distribution and lifecycle management of cryptographic keys in various uh, KMS providers. It allows organizations to greatly simplify the, the lifecycle management of keys Vault has distributed, and it maintains centralized control of those keys in Vault while still taking advantage of the cryptographic capabilities native to KMS providers, such as you see here with AWS and their KMS. Microsoft with Azure Key Vault, or Google Cloud with um, Google, Google Cloud's KMS. Conceptually, a uh, KMS provider resource represents a destination to distribute keys to and subsequently manage them. It's configured using a generic set of parameters. The value supplied to the generic set of parameters will differ depending on the specific provider. So for example, here, the provider is Azure, Azure Key Vault, and the syntax is exactly the same if you switch it up and um, are now using Google Cloud's KMS as a quick example of that abstraction layer. Okay. So, Traditional key management environments and applications use different, sometimes unique means to communicate. The added complexity and infrastructure costs, operational costs and employee costs make running different systems cumbersome and complex. KMIP was developed to bridge the gap that existed across these different traditional systems. This creates an additional layer of complexity which is how bringing, uh, you, to bring traditional systems and cloud-based security into the same conversation. Certain services and applications within organizations need to perform cryptographic operations, such as data encryption for storage at rest. These services do not necessarily want to implement 
the logic around managing these cryptographic keys and thus seek to delegate the task to key management or of key management rather to external providers <clears throat> vault enables kmip operations to be run through a dedicated secure protocol for managing and executing vault operations with Vault Enterprise and the Advanced Data Protection Module, the ADP module, um, customers can directly integrate Vault Enterprise with their um, secure workloads and enterprise workflows to cryptographic operations, such as transparent database encryption, full disk encryption, virtual machine and volume disk encryption, et cetera, all into one easy to use workflow and API. Okay, so a bit more context on KMIP now and uh, the challenge it can present. Organizations um, store sensitive, personal, and valuable data, which must be protected. Um, leakage of such data can lead to financial loss, reputational damage, legal ramifications, and more. Um, there are often requirements to comply with data protection standards and regulations like PCI DSS, GDPR, HIPAA, etc. The OASIS Key Management Interoperability Protocol standard or KMIP standard is widely a widely adopted protocol for um, handling cryptographic workloads and secrets management uh, for enterprise infrastructure such as databases, network storage, and virtual physical servers. When an organization has services and applications that need to perform cryptographic operations, for example, as we talked about before, transparent database encryption, um, full disk encryption, et cetera. Um, it often delegates the key management task to an external provider via the KMIP protocol. As a result, your organization may have existing services or applications that implement KMIP or use wrapper clients with libraries slash drivers that implement KMIP. This makes it difficult for an organization to adopt the Vault API in place of KMIP. The solution with Vault Enterprise um, 1.2 is the introduction of the KMIP Secrets Engine, which allows Vault to act as a KMIP server for clients that retrieve cryptograph cryptographic keys for encrypting data via the KMIP protocol. Vault's KMIP Secrets Engine manages its own listener to the service service to service KMIP requests, which operate on KMIP managed objects as you see in the in the top right there. Vault policies don't come into play during these KMIP requests. The KMIP Secrets Engine determines the set of KMIP operations the client that the clients are allowed to perform based on the roles that are applied to a TLS client certificate. This enables existing systems to continue to using the KMIP APIs instead of Vault's APIs. So hopefully that separation as part of the integration, if you will, um, is, a, is a bit clearer with, with that um, diagram. Just quickly, on when we typically see cl clients considering the migration to Vault Enterprise, it's particularly relevant when talking about key management, of course, given that the two secrets engines I've just talked about are not available in the open source offering. So quickly, uh, just for the sake of argument here, um, as we've seen, um, Vault can simplify the barrier to entry when it comes to complex security technologies. But as we often say, uh, Vault quickly finds itself in the business critical path, or more colloquially, Vault often finds itself a victim of its own success. And so if your plans do include, say, a larger user base or a compliance requirements, we talked about some of those regulations earlier, um, to name but a few considerations, that might be the time to start um, to come and talk to us um, about the benefits of Vault Enterprise, some of which I've obviously outlined today. Okay, so hopefully um, that's given you a scan <laughs> across the horizon of what um, what Vault can uh, can work with, what Vault can do um, when it comes to cryptographic operations and the management of them. I mentioned DevDot before, and it really is an excellent resource. Um, all the things I've talked about today um, are documented there. And just as importantly, I'd say, um, it has tutorials uh, where you can uh, play with the features and functionality directly. Um, I've highlighted a few of those on the right there, but 
there are many more um, and covering all of the HashiCorp products, including ones I haven't talked about today. <clears throat> okay, so as I promised very quickly, um, who are Summerford? Well, we're, um, we're experienced in uh, large scale deployments. You know, our clients, a few examples of which you see here, come from all sectors of um, government and industry. Well, we focus on what um, we typically call best in breed technologies, often uh, Gartner Magic Quadrant leaders. We invest in our staff. They're well trained and certified in all the technologies we represent. As I said, I'm chipped in Terraform and Vault and soon console, I hope. Um, working towards it anyway. Um, our, our technical team provides pre-sales, implementation and post-sales support. Our, um, our approach is really to really understand the business problem and to recommend the right solution. And something like HashiCorp makes that very easy because it's all, yes, we call it the Hashi stack, but it's very much plug and play. And, you know, it can work with whatever is existing there. There's, you know, there's very few green fields in this, in this business and we understand that. Um, so whether you're looking for a sounding board to understand your problem space or to tune a solution that's already in place, as I just said, or anything in between, um, please do consider talking to us. And with that, um, just, want to thank you for your time and attention and I hope you have a great day.